Hello guys, welcome to this new video. So now we're going to go through question 2 in the May 22 time zone 2 paper 2. So here we're given an ideal gas in a container with a frictionless piston. We're given the volume, the temperature and the pressure. And we first need to calculate the number of gas particles in the cylinder. So here we can use just the ideal gas law PV is equal to nRT. So from this we can calculate the number of moles. So N is going to be PV divided by RT. But we don't need the number of moles. We need the number of particles. But luckily we can, we can convert from moles to particles very easily with the Avogadro's constant, Avogadro's number, as that tells us that in one mole, there's 6.02 times 10 to the 23 particles in one mole. So if we calculate the number of moles and we multiply it by Avogadro's number, we'll find the number of particles. So we can say that the number of particles is uh, 6.02 times 10 to the 23 times N, which is PV divided by RT. So all we need to do is plug everything in. Pressure was 4 times 10 to the 5. Volume was 2.5 times 10 to the minus 3. And obviously here we always want to make sure we work in SI units. So Pascal's meters cubed Kelvin. We don't have Kelvin here. So we add 273. We get 310 Kelvin. So we need to divide by 8.31, which is the gas constant, times by 310. And this will give us 2.34 times 10 to the 23 particles. So it's just a simple application of this formula. And now we are told that energy is supplied to the gas and the piston moves so that the gas can expand. Temperature is constant. And for this process, we need to discuss the changes in the density of the gas. Well, density is just mass over volume. And well, the mass is constant as we don't introduce new air particles. So mass is constant. But the piston expands. So if the piston expands, what that means is that the volume increases. Volume increases. And well, if we still have the same number of particles, or the same mass of particles in a larger volume, the density will decrease. So density decreases, as they will simply occupy a larger volume. Yes. And then in part two, we need to discuss the changes in internal energy of the gas. Well, this should be already pretty obvious to us that if the temperature is constant, the internal energy must also be constant. So this also comes up quite often in paper ones. This we just have to remember if the temperature is constant, the internal energy cannot change for an ideal gas. So as T is constant. And well, the reason this is the case, as we know that internal energy, so U is equal to the E kinetic plus E potential of the, of the particles. But we know that potential is zero for ideal gases. And we also know that E kinetic from the formula is just 3 over 2 times the Boltzmann constant times the temperature. But our temperature is constant, so the kinetic energy also doesn't change. And therefore, our internal energy remains constant. But whenever we are told that the temperature is held constant for an ideal gas, we can just remember that the internal energy will not change either. And well, this is how you solve question 2 in this paper. I hope I was able to help. And see you in the next video.